Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I think we're now up to day 11 of my travel diary. So on this particular day, we headed out again to Ishikawa to go to a museum. So again, the, the drive from where we were in Fukui took about an hour and a half or so, or a little over an hour and a half. Now, this was quite a small museum, and the one thing about this particular museum is if you do want to go there, it would probably be a good idea to either know some Japanese or have somebody with you that knows some Japanese, otherwise you're probably going to have to rely on your phone a lot because pretty much everything at this particular museum was in Japanese. So there wasn't really a lot of English translated descriptions uh, in regards to the exhibits. So the museum that we went to on this particular day was the Ishikawa Insect Museum. So again, like the Dinosaur Museum, I have no idea on what the technical name is for all of the different species of insects. My knowledge is very basic when it comes to insects, so I just basically refer to them as beetles, butterflies, dragonflies, grasshoppers, and so on. Now I must say, I was shocked at the sheer amount of different species there was of all of the different insects at this particular museum. I mean, I know that there's a ton of different species out there, but to see so many in one location was pretty amazing. Now, as soon as we entered the Ishikawa Insect Museum, the first thing that you'll see is the gift store. Because again, if you've ever been to Japan, one thing you'll know that there is a lot of is gift shops and souvenir shops because it is definitely a big part of their culture. I mean, I guess a lot of zoos and museums around the world probably have gift stores attached to them, but it's just such a common thing to see in Japan. I just expect it almost everywhere I go now. Now, the entry fee to the museum itself was about $5 per person, which was pretty good for what it offered. So heading through the entrance after getting our tickets took us past these bug themed Power Rangers into a room that had a few terrariums on display. So these terrariums were all artificial, it was basically just a model of what these particular insects' environments were like. So there wasn't any real insects just in this small room here. Now following the path took us into this big room that had a massive collection of preserved insects. Now this is what I was referring to when I mentioned earlier that I was shocked at the variety of different breeds here. This room was astonishing to say the least. So in Japan, they actually have four different variety of rhino beetles and about 36 different variety of the stag beetle. Now in Japanese, the rhino beetle is known as the kabutomushi and the stag beetle is referred to as the kawagata. Now, to be honest, because I am a little bit of a nerd, the way I remembered these is actually from Digimon. So there are a couple of Digimon that are designed after these two insects that have names that actually resemble them. Made it very easy for me to remember these names. My personal favorite when it comes to all of these is the Kabutomushi. I mean, what's not to like about this massive insect? Now, to be perfectly honest, I don't know what a lot of these insects are. Although I can say for sure, these guys here look like they would have no trouble reaching the top shelf. So actually, these beetles here with the long legs are called harlequin beetles, and the ones with the long legs are the males. The long legs are actually used for fighting other males, which I didn't actually know. So the longer the legs, the more chance they have in winning. Now you can't really see it too well on the camera here, but these ones had a really nice blue colour. And pretty much all of the bugs in this section dig holes and live inside of trees. It was pretty amazing to see just how long some of these insects arms are. I mean this big harlequin beetle here, his front legs are longer than my hand. Now the one thing you'll see a lot of in countryside Japan, and actually in a lot of places around Japan, especially when it's a bit hotter, is dragonflies. I don't think a sunny day went by when I didn't see these guys flying around. 
And for me personally, seeing these guys fly around on a nice sunny day just gives a nice, peaceful, relaxed vibe to the day. And I had no idea how many different kinds of dragonflies there were. Actually, one thing I did learn at this museum is that only a specific few of these are considered dragonfly. The other are actually something else. I can't remember exactly, but just because they look like this doesn't mean that they're dragonflies. What's that? I forgot the name. What's the name? Cicada. Yes, Cicada. Very, very. Do you recognize this? It's from Australia. No, I have a cup of tea. You don't. Malaysia, Thai. Hmm. This is Asia. 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 Seeing a lot of these bugs and butterflies on display like this really reminds me a lot of Animal Crossing for some reason. Although these insects here I don't think I've ever actually seen before, so I know nothing about these ones. So if you know what they are, maybe drop it in the comment section below. I was also pretty surprised at how big the grasshoppers are. These are another bug that I really like. Although whenever I see them, it does kind of remind me of a bug's life. Which, now that I'm thinking about it, all of the bugs in that movie were really off-scale when you're looking at them all here. Here we also have quite a few different breeds of roaches. As well as mantis. And stick insects, which are another insect that I really like. They always just seem so chill to me. And I remember when I was a kid, whenever I saw one, I would always pick it up. But I actually had no idea that these had wings. Although, in saying that, I don't think that this one's wings would actually do anything. Next we have a section here that is just all different variety of bees and hornets. Which, some of these had extremely long stingers. I didn't think that they could actually get as long as they are. Now, one thing I actually forgot to mention in one of my previous videos is back when we went to Asuwayama Park, where they had like that little mini zoo sort of thing, when we were outside walking around, there was actually two of these giant Japanese hornets flying while fighting about 30 centimeters away from my leg. Now, I did have my camera out filming, but the last thing I could think of was trying to get a good shot of them. I just wanted to get out of there as quickly as I could. And I mean, look at the size of these. They're huge. Seeing all of the different variety of moths was really cool as well. Some of them were just incredibly big. It was really surprising to see just how many different variety of moths and butterflies that there are. And to be honest, I actually thought that there was a difference between the two, but after going to this museum, although you can kind of see the difference, physiologically there is actually no discernible difference between a moth and a butterfly apparently. I personally think that some moths have a much more elegant appearance to them than butterflies. Especially like the big white ones. Except for a select few butterflies that will be coming up shortly. So this here is the butterfly section. Now it was pretty cool to see all of the different sizes, colours and patterns that they had. Some of them even looked like they just had dead leaves for wings, which I don't think I'd actually ever seen before. The same one. But it is it? These ones here had such a vibrant colour, I really 
like this colour of blue. Now, I did want to quickly mention that there are actually live bugs to see coming up as well. It's not all just these preserved bugs at this museum. Now, these are the butterflies that I was referring to earlier. They look absolutely incredible. I'm not too sure if these kind of butterflies are rare or not, but they sure look like they would be. Their wings are so shiny that they're almost holographic. There was a description next to them that said that they are some of the top most beautiful butterflies in the world, which seems like a pretty accurate description to me. So after the room that had the massive collection of preserved insects, we headed along the path into the next room that had a few terrariums set up to see live insects. Now some of the bugs in here were also quite large. Now to be honest, I don't really see a lot of large insects here in Melbourne, so it was actually really cool to see a lot of these, especially these Madagascan roaches, these were just huge. And I mean, how cute does this guy look, just sitting there having his lunch? Now coming to the Ishikawa Insect Museum on this particular day was kind of just on a whim. So this was actually the last day that we would spend in Fukui for a little while because on the next day we would be travelling up to Yokohama just south of Tokyo. So we didn't really have anything to do on this particular day so we thought yeah why not we'll go to the Ishikawa Insect Museum. So it's kind of just spur of the moment but it was really lucky that we did decide to do that because on this particular day it turned out to be one of only two days I think a week that they have this set up. So they had a few of the bigger beetles there that you could hold and touch and although everybody that was there was lined up with their kids it definitely did not stop me from lining up to have a bit of a look myself because I have always wanted to touch and hold a like rhino beetle or a stag beetle they're just so big and yeah it was just a really cool experience and I'm really glad that we were there on that particular day And being so close up, I noticed on this one that there was actually little hairs under this horn. And in Japanese, this beetle is known as Herakurasu, which if you're a Pokemon fan, you'll know from Heracross. And to be honest, after this experience, I can really see why people get so into insects and like having them as pets. It was definitely really cool. If you ever get a chance to come to this museum, I would highly recommend that you do a little bit of research to see what days they have this little meet and greet sort of section set up, because it's definitely well worth it. So after this we headed on to the next section which was this huge butterfly house. Now I've always really liked going to butterfly houses and this particular one felt like it was right out of a Ghibli film. All the greenery, the beautiful flowers, the butterflies fluttering around, as well as the sound of trickling water from this man-made waterfall up towards the back, it all came together to make such a peaceful place. This would have to be one of the best butterfly houses I've ever actually been to.
Now, the Butterfly House was the last sort of main exhibit at this particular museum. They did have one final little one set up, which was just a couple of little terrariums that had like these little holes in them so you could kind of put your hand in and touch and pick up some of the bugs that were in there, such as these crickets. as well as these stick insects. So I did have to pick one of these guys up because, I mean, I had to help him get back onto the tree. Now, I did really enjoy the Ishikawa Insect Museum, and I do highly recommend it for anyone. It's really cool. Even if you're not like full on into bugs and everything like that, it's still very interesting. And yeah, it was very small, but it was also really cheap, and there was a lot of interesting facts there to learn. Now that's actually it for today's video. We didn't really do anything else on this particular day. As I mentioned, it really was just a spur of the moment trip to the Insect Museum. And please, if you did like this, it would really help me out a lot if you would like this video, hit that subscribe button and maybe click that notification bell for future updates. And it would be great if you left a comment if anything interests you as well. So as I mentioned earlier, in the next episode we will be heading up to Yokohama, just south of Tokyo. And we will be spending the next couple of days in Yokohama. And I really do look forward to showing you all of the amazing places that we went to while we were in Yokohama, so I hope that you all look forward to that. And yeah, can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye for now.